I traded my Galaxy Watch 4 for a Fitbit Lux for one week, and this is what I found. Fitbit Lux? Something like that. I've never delved into any Fitbit. I've heard good things. I know Google acquired them fairly recently. Decent unboxing. There was just a little like little tab that I had to take off. This thing is absolutely tiny. Oh my God, why is this so tiny? Bro, the screen comparison is crazy. It comes with one extra wristband as well as a USB charging cord. And that's all that really comes in the box. That's all you really need for a smartwatch. I started charging the watch and this automatically came up on my phone. It's just a little setup tab. So if I wanted to set it up, I literally just clicked it and it's already ready to pair. Send me to the app store and now I'm downloading the Fitbit app so that way I can get all of the information from the Fitbit to my phone. It looks so small. <laughs> this one has a bit of a slower response. Not that big of a deal, but I honestly thought it was going to be a little bit harder to read the display because it's so small, but I'm not having any issues at all. It looks fine. I'm officially putting the Galaxy Watch down. I'm only gonna charge it when I need to. Like if it's dead, I'm not gonna let it die. Um, but this is my main driver for my wrist right now. It's literally on. You can barely see it. <laughs> I'm not able to get the correct representation of how bright it actually is. It's legible, barely. As far as the screen brightness, I actually found that it got better over time. For whatever reason, in that particular instance, it was bad because I don't think it really detected the brightness, so it takes a little bit of time to adjust. What do you think right now about the Fitbit Classic? Or Fitbit for I something? I like the little Fitbit. It's so cute. It looks like an ankle bracelet. <laughs> Put on your arm. It doesn't look bad. It looks like it would be an Apple product. What the fuck? I like it. It's cute. So yesterday I made a bold claim saying that this watch would probably hit three days without charging at all. So I'm gonna put that to the test. Yesterday I took it off the charger, it was about 97% if I remember correctly. At the moment, I'm at 87%. So I just came back from a full day of work, so full eight hours. And also from the last clip that you saw was probably like nine hours ago. The watch right now is at 78%. We're going on to the second day of no charge starting tomorrow and we'll see how long it takes. I'm I'm guessing it'll probably be somewhere around 30% on the fourth day. We'll find out. It is literally nighttime. Again, still haven't charged the watch. It is right now at 66%. Just came back from work. One thing I will say that I really do miss about having a watch, a smart watch, is having the notifications. For whatever reason, this one won't pair to my phone correctly, but since I've paired this to my phone, I haven't had notifications on, which I definitely do miss. I woke up today and I've been having so much fun with Uber Eats that um, I started doing it after work and I'm gonna do it right now. And also I woke up with a battery still being at 42%. I haven't charged this thing in three days and I did say that once it got somewhere around 30%, I would charge it. These under the seat, my dad taught me that and I've never been the same since. So now I'll be going over exactly what I loved, exactly what I hated about the Fitbit Lux. I think this is a little bit of a given, but I feel like whenever anything has incredible battery life, it's definitely something that everybody wants. The Fitbit Lux has the most battery life that I've ever tested on any sort of product. It's insane how much of a battery life this thing has. Whatever smartwatch you have doesn't have everything jam packed, but it's battery life 
is insane, bro. You saw the three days I went without charging. And if you were comfortable pushing that battery to its extreme all the way until it dies, I'm sure, I'm sure it'll pass that three day mark. The website actually quotes five days for the, uh, for the Lux. And I don't doubt at all that it would actually probably even surpass those five days that you would be using the Lux. Another thing that annoyed me at first but then became a huge plus at the end was the fact that it basically melted into the band so it basically felt like you were just wearing a bracelet i feel like this is a huge plus that i overlooked because it is a fitness tracker so if you're into fitness and if you're into going to the gym every day you don't want a bulky watch face in the way of your push-ups. You don't really want to notice that you're wearing anything. I believe Google purchased Fitbit. So this isn't too big of a surprise, but the app that you use with the Fitbit is actually incredibly well-designed. It's easy to use, kind of intuitive, um, and just it doesn't really have any sort of hiccups. You don't feel like you're missing anything there. No. We go into the things that I didn't like about this particular machine. This thing has no button. It has zero buttons. Why is that a thing, bro? I feel like the world and technology is going towards this buttonless, this lack of tactile buttons future. And for whatever reason, I don't like it. I feel like most people don't like it. We need some buttons, but the Lux takes it a bit further and not only doesn't put any buttons, puts no like touch sensitive pads anywhere. The only reason I want some sort of button or some sort of like little touch pad is so that way I can go back to the time as quickly as possible, no matter where I am on the menu. So the way that you use this particular band is that you use swipe gestures for almost everything. If you wanna to go to the settings, you have to swipe up. If you want to um, add any sort of timer, you have to swipe to the right a bunch of times so that way you can get to the timer. That being said, it leads to number two, that it was just a bit unresponsive from time to time. When I would lift my wrist, it wouldn't always come up with a time. Um, even when I touched it while I was like trying to fidget with it so that way I could see the time Sometimes it just was unresponsive to the touch The next one is something that I don't know if I can necessarily pin on the Fitbit Lux or if it's more on my end But I had no notifications this whole time. There was no sense of vibration There was really nothing that I was feeling whenever I got a notification on my phone Although it was paired and it didn't look like I needed to do anything else for whatever reason the ability to look at notifications was on this watch, but it never came up with anything. The very last thing that I would say, it feels like because everything around it is dark, the bezels are so big, it feels like you're gonna have a bigger display than you do. Every time I look, I look at the watch though, it just feels like there should be more to it. So would I trade my Galaxy Watch 4 for the Fitbit Lux? No, mainly because I want a watch first and a fitness tracker second, not a fitness tracker that also happens to be a watch. I would definitely recommend having the Fitbit in your arsenal for when you're going on the hikes, when you're doing extreme workout, extreme workouts. Anyway, that is my two cents. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you're gonna reach for a Lux or if you already have one down in the comments down below and what you like, hate, or kind of feel about the product. Thank you so much for watching, peace.